so today we're going to be talking about how to do a zero water change aquarium system like the one I have right behind me. So before watching this video, it's crucial that you guys know um, what the nitrogen cycle is. That is the foundation for us to understand how to achieve a zero water change aquarium system. So if you have not already, um, if you don't, if you're not familiar with the nitrogen cycle and the nitrification process, then I'll put the card on the top right hand corner of the screen and go and watch that video first. All right, so let's dive right into it first. In order to understand this whole thing, let's break it down into three parts. First, we need to understand why we do water changes. And then from there, we can understand um, what do we need to aim for uh, in order to achieve zero water change. And then how do we proceed to actually achieve these aims that we're going to set out. All right. So when it comes to water changes, the easiest way to think of it is input and output. Right. You're putting some things in, you're taking some things out. So when we do water change, most people would think that we are just removing a nitrate or rather nitrogen from the aquarium system, which is true, but that's not the only thing that we uh, do water changes for. There are actually other processes that are going on and other things that we are removing and adding back in. So one thing that uh, another thing that we could be removing as well are things like phosphate. The only reason why we always talk about nitrate is because that is the most prominent one, that's the one that we always measure and measuring that is a good proxy for measuring all the other things that actually build up in the aquarium but it is not the only thing we are removing so there are other things that we are removing and also uh, when we change water it means that we're adding in fresh water and fresh water uh, would actually have certain minerals and elements and micro elements that uh, you can that you're putting back into the tank. When we want to achieve a zero water change aquarium system, the two things that we have to aim for are the addition of uh, micro elements and the removal of your know, more macro elements like phosphate and potassium. So how do we go about doing that? There are, I would say four things that we really have to take into consideration. Uh, first of all, what is going to help you remove your nitrate and phosphate are plants. Now that is quite a simple part, uh, but it gets a little more complicated when you really want to know how to do it effectively. Uh, ultimately, depending on your bio load, you will need a certain X amount of plants. Uh, what people don't realize is that it's really the growth of plants that's going to really help you take out all that nitrate as opposed to the biomass. So for example, you can have a really, really big Amazon sword, right? huge Amazon sort as compared to um, let's just say another small Amazon sort but maybe they're under different conditions the small Amazon sort if it's under better conditions would actually take up more nitrate and more phosphates than the big Amazon sort uh, because it will grow faster under the more optimal conditions and that's really what takes up uh, the nitrate and phosphates is the growth of the plant not the mass of the plant so it's not the size of the plant it's really the growth and so what you're shooting for is maximum growth in your aquarium assuming that you're trying to take out as much as possible which might not always be the case because eventually it comes back down to balance just that the fact that most people will probably struggle with taking out not enough than struggling with taking out too much so the plant growth rate is something you really want to take into account when choosing plants you want things that grow fast now on top of things that grow fast, you want things that take the nutrients out of the water column. So a lot of uh, root plants, they take their nutrients out from the um, soil or sand or your gravel. And so those are less effective as compared to things like, for example, behind me, you can see the, the kabomba or things like hornwort that will just take all the nutrients out from the water column. But you have to bear in mind growth rate as well. So hornwort, Kabomba, they have really, really high growth rate, under highlighting. Um, but you can compare that to things like Anubias and Java fern. They are a rhizome plant, meaning that they do actually take their nutrients out from the water column as well. But really slow growing plants, so they are not as effective and you need a lot more of them to do the same job as just a little bit of Kabomba. So besides rhizome plants and plants like uh, Kabomba, there are actually two other types of plants that are really really effective in helping you remove your macronutrients and take out that nitrate and phosphate out of the water and they are 
terrestrial plants and floating plants. Now the reason that they're really good, number one of course they take their nutrients from the water column itself but on top of that, um, so let's talk about um, the ease of caring for them or their, their ability to thrive really well and that's because they're not limited by the CO2 that is uh, available in the water. They get their CO2 out from the air so that gives them unlimited CO2 so their growth rate can go very high. Caring for them is relatively easy so as you can see like my kabomba behind eventually I'm gonna have to trim it down because it's just gonna overcrowd the whole tank right uh, with things like floating plants they're really really easy to maintain you just scoop a bunch out and throw them out or if you have a, like me a turtle they eat them just feed it with a turtle and that is that. Um, with your terrestrial plants they're also a lot easier um, generally you don't really have to trim them but if they really go out of you know this world and just grow all over then trimming them is pretty easy as well you just cut it off you don't have to get your hands wet unlike um, things in the aquarium that you have to get your hands wet to trim and you're probably gonna make a little bit of a mess in there when you trim it as well okay what's next now there is one thing to know and that is remember when you talk about input and output so when you grow plants in there there is zero output the output comes when you actually trim the plants and get rid of that. So when you get rid of the biomass, that is how you're removing nitrogen from the aquarium. So you cannot escape that. You do have to do it. Uh, it might take weeks, months, maybe even years. For my situation, it will probably be months. And every so probably every few months, I will have to just go in, cut out all the kabomba, remove the the floating plants and then it restarts the cycle. Alright, so the next thing we want to talk about is the lights because as I mentioned it is not just the biomass of the plants but the growth that is important and one thing that really really determines the um, growth rate of a plant is the lighting. So in general you're going to want a strong pair of lights that are going to help your plants grow faster and so um, you can go for LEDs, fluorescent tubes but basically go for good planted lights. The one I'm using here is the Ecotech Radeon XR15 and they are doing an amazing job. The next factor we want to talk about is food. Now when it comes to food there are a few ways we approach this topic. Uh, one of it is remember that we talk about input and output while well, food is our input and so when we feed in we don't want to be overfeeding. You're not trying to feed them you know five six times a day every two hours and a huge amount. Uh, you, essentially what you really want to do with food is feed um, feed as little as you can while still maintaining a healthy fish. So for me that would be usually once a day. Uh, I think you can actually go even alternate days but that depends on the fish you get and how much you feed them on it once a day. But in general uh, anywhere between alternate days to twice a day would be the real max if you're trying to grow the fish a little bit but then remember that the more you put in the more plant growth you're going to want to create in order to balance that system because eventually it all comes back down to balancing the input and the output and if you have way too little input and too much output as in not really output but plants growing then you might create a situation where there's not enough nutrients as well and depending on your type of plants you might actually starve out and die so it's really about the balance it's not that the more plants the better and it's not that the more, more food or less food is better it's about striking that perfect balance to have healthy fish and healthy plants and healthy aquarium <laughs> all right so and the other thing about food as well so uh, you guys know that dr bessler is my channel sponsor and so when you choose a food it can be dr bessler it can be other food but remember that you want a high quality food like dr bessler's that they basically um, don't have any fillers and they don't pollute the water um, and also they don't have artificial coloring because if you're not going to change water then the color is going to affect your visual um, aspect of the water because it's going to get tainted with the artificial colors and eventually you end up changing water because it's just discolored. We're going to go to the last part of the equation which is fertilization or fertilizers and so this part comes back to the input. Now when we feed our fish food not just are we putting in uh, macronutrients so you're not just adding uh, nitrogen and phosphates inside but they do contain some level of micro elements um, unfortunately it's probably not going to be enough for our plants to thrive and survive on and really get that growth we need in order to take up all the nutrients so long term you're probably going to need a little bit of uh, 
fertilizers and depending on what type of plants you use and how much um, growth you're getting out of it then it would determine on how much you need to fertilize but a basic fertilizer usually would suffice unless you're trying to grow some very demanding plants which I wouldn't recommend if you're trying to do a zero water change um, system at the same time so uh, basically get some kind of a fertilizer that is uh, all-in-one complete for me I use sea chems uh, flourish and I do those um, iron and potassium as well but I don't think those are necessary I just do it because I want the plants to grow even crazier inside and I want it to be a jungle so to sum up why we do water change we're adding in micro elements removing some macro elements and so we need to replicate that and achieve um, this same thing without doing water change and how we do that when it comes to input we're talking about um, food and fertilizers get some good food get some good fertilizers when we talk about output we're talking about removing plants but first we need the plants to absorb all of that and we need the plants to grow fast as well because it's the plant growth that, that absorb the nitrogen out of the water column so you're going to want good plants that grow fast and take their nutrients out of the water column so things like a bomba, potos, terrestrial plant um, and most types of floating plants do grow pretty fast and of course you're going to want a good pair of lights that um, help your plants grow fast enough to absorb all that nutrients and ultimately remember input output but it's really about the balance you don't want to be taking out and absorbing way more than you're putting in and neither do you want it to be the other way around it comes back to balance the only way you're going to figure out what works really I mean some people come up with certain rules but ultimately experience and no matter how much experience you have trial and error so you're going to need some test kits you're going to need to test your levels and you're going to have to trial and error a little bit with more experience that trial and error process will be less painful and if you're lucky like me then you just happen to balance it at your first try so um, i did mention my sponsors but i do really want to thank them for sponsoring my channel and so a big thank you to dr Bester's biofish food go check them out guys they are a really really good product um, go down to the description down below to find out more about them, about the product, and to locate a fish shop near you that actually has one of these. Alright, I hope you guys learned how to do a zero water change system and I hope to see more out there. If you guys are going to try it, then take some photos, document it a little bit and send them to me um, on Instagram. I'm on Instagram at sgbearded underscore aquarius. You can tag me or you can direct message me and then I can just take a look at what you're doing or maybe if you want to clarify something go ahead message me over there or actually the comments will be even better so that everyone can see also do remember to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you have not already and I'll see you guys in the next video Beard out